I'm recording this message from America and I'm sending it to you. My wife is from the Philippines. She is a member of the kingdom family as well as all of her family. And uh, I have the honor and the privilege of listening to your Zooms and your live streams. I've attended a few of the KLC meetings that they have here in Florida. And I've had the honor to have my spirit stirred by your messages. And the first thing I want to say is I appreciate your ministry. I appreciate the work that you're doing. And I want to offer you a word of encouragement in light of your recent circumstances with the president and police and the military and these false accusations against you. You know, there's probably going to be a lot of people who send videos, proclaim your innocence and support you in that way. And uh, I'll leave that for them. I have a different word for you. I was thinking about your situation and uh, the way that you're being persecuted. And I tried to imagine what that might feel like to be a minister of the gospel, somebody highly favored of the Lord, somebody in a position to lead and to teach others, and then to be bombarded, to be assaulted, to be attacked with false accusations. And in some ways it may make you feel like you need to run for your life or hide or something like that. I've seen some images of the police there in the Philippines on the KLC compound looking for you. And I tried to imagine what that might feel like. And my mind went to Elijah in the Bible. You know, in Kings eight in First Kings eighteen, the prophet Elijah had just come off of a great victory. He had called down fire from heaven on Mount Carmel, and uh, it was a showdown, so to speak, between the prophets of Baal, the four hundred prophets of Baal, and little old lonely Elijah. And the prophets of Baal spent most of the day calling down fire. And they got no response from their God. And then it was Elijah's turn. Not only did he call down fire, but he increased the stakes by a flood in the, uh, the altar with water. And he made a difficult challenge even more difficult according to man and when he called on the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob fire came down from heaven it consumed the altar it consumed the sacrifice and the Bible says it even licked up the water and uh, right after this there was rain on a land that had previously had drought and famine and they and uh, the children of Israel, they rose up and they slew the prophets of Baal. It was a great victory. I don't know that a greater victory has ever been recorded in the Bible. But Jezebel heard about it. The queen, the evil ruler. And she ordered Elijah to be killed. And Elijah ran and he hid. And the Lord sent an angel to him to feed him. To comfort him. The Lord spoke to him. He said, Elijah. He said, why are you hiding in this cave? And Elijah said, Lord, I'm the only one left. I'm the only one who hasn't bowed my knee 
to Baal. And the Lord spoke back to him and he told him, oh no, I have 7,000 more that you know not of who's never bowed their knee. And I wanted to offer you a word of encouragement, Pastor. And I wanted to let you know you're not alone. You're not alone. The Lord sees you. He's orchestrated these steps. And I want you to know the last days of Elijah were greater than the former. He was up in that cave and he was wanting to give up on the heels of a great victory. The Lord came to him, sustained him, spoke to him, encouraged him, dusted him off and sent him back on his way. He went on to mentor Elisha, which some say had even a greater ministry on earth than Elijah did. And then he gave him the honor of being one of only two men in recorded history to leave this earthly realm without death. He sent down a fiery chariot from heaven and an escort by the angels to escort him from the earth to, to the heavenly realm. And Pastor Apollo, I just want you to know I'm praying for you. The people here in America are praying for you. And I believe that your latter days are going to be better than your former days. I believe you still have men and women to raise up. I believe you still have a body of Christ to mentor. I believe the Lord is guiding your steps. And the officers of Jezebel, the officers of the president, the officers of the enemy are going to taste no victory. No victory. The victory is yours. It's been given to, to you by the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm also reminded in Psalms where, where David said, I was young and now I'm old and never have I seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging bread. You have a ministry, you're anointed, you're called, you're ordained. The Lord has his hand upon you and you have a flock. The Lord is not going to leave that flock unattended and he's going to let no harm come to the shepherd. And sir, you don't know me and I've never met you, but I do hope that you find encouragement in these words. I hope you find strength in these words. And I pray, and I proclaim that your latter days will be greater than your former. Praise the Father. And thank you for all that you do. Be encouraged.